Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares, and what we're looking at here is the Nintendo Super Game Boy accessory, which not only lets you play Game Boy games on your Super Nintendo, but also has a really awesome color palette swap function. Rather than viewing your games exclusively in that classic Game Boy green, you can select from a bunch of fun presets, or even go in and select your own colors. It's quite fun to customize the look of your Game Boy games in this way, so for this video I thought it'd be fun to explore the concept of four color palettes and discuss how to make the most of these limitations, so let's get going! Before we set off in to make our own Super Game Boy inspired palettes, we need to talk about one of the most important things when it comes to making a color palette, and that is color value. This is a way of describing how bright or dark a color is perceived as. For example, if we're selecting colors using an HSB type slider, a yellow hue with a 100% saturation and 100% brightness is much lighter than a purple hue with an equivalent saturation and brightness. This is more obvious if we convert these two colors into grayscale. See how there's an obvious difference in perceived brightness between these two? If we use our eyedropper tool on the grayscale tones, we'll find out that the brightness of the yellow is 89, while the purple is only 26. The benefit of assessing color value in grayscale like this is that it condenses the information of hue, saturation, and brightness into a single statistic by which we can rank the perceived strength of a color against any other color. This idea is critical when working with restricted pixel art limitations to ensure that we're achieving the intended readability in the artwork. If I convert these three examples from the start of the video into grayscale, we'll find that I've actually built them all from an equivalent color value. I used to feel lost when I would just randomly select colors from the color wheel and just kind of hope they'd work out. So these days when I'm making a brand new color palette from scratch, I usually start by creating my artwork in grayscale first because it's the easiest way to work out the image contrast. As an example of value contrast, let's take an already completed artwork composed of four grayscale tones and see what happens when we play with the contrast. In the first image we'll use a full black with a brightness of 0, a full white with a brightness of 100, and then our two midtones spaced evenly between those at 33 and 67. So the fact that we've gone across the spectrum from full black to full white gives us a very strong look, and the readability is also very clear because of the evenly spaced midtones. If we take this idea of even spacing, but move the two black and white extremes closer to each other, we'll end up with a softer look. So in this image, I'm using a value of 20 for the black and 80 for the white, with evenly spaced midtones at 40 and 60. I kind of like this look because I find it easier on the eyes when the values are a bit closer together like this. In the third example, let's see what happens when we adjust only the midtone shades. So we'll use the 20 and 80 as the extremes, but now the midtones are moved to 30 and 70, so they push further away from each other towards those extremes. And see how it kind of muddies the image in this example? Now, I'm not saying we always need to implement color palettes with perfectly even spacing like the first two examples, but in a situation where we only have four colors to work with, it is important to realize what kind of appearance these colors are providing when it comes to color value and contrast. From here, we can quickly inject some color into these grayscale images by using a color overlay, if your software of choice allows for that kind of thing. In Asprite, for example, we can create a new layer and fill that with any color of our choice. Then we go into the layer properties and change the mode to the color option. What this does is overlay the color into the image below, but it'll keep the values intact, meaning any contrast we worked out in simple grayscale tones will come through as well. Please note as well, if you use color overlays on top of a 100% black or white, they won't adopt any of the color overlay because they're already as dark or light as they can be, respectively. I think it's not a bad look actually, it's certainly very bold, but if you want to pick up more overlay color then it helps to nudge those extremes in a little bit, such as using the 20, 40, 60, 80 contrast scheme. In this case the darkest value picked up quite a bit of color, so I'd probably take this and back off the saturation there, or reduce the opacity of the overlay layer, but this is all dependent on your own preferences of course. Anyway, with this singular color overlay, we're already getting into the neighborhood of that Super Game Boy idea, and if you're satisfied with this look, you could definitely stop there. But let's take this idea of color overlays a step further, and rather than just using a single color overlaid on the entire image, let's choose a different color for each of the four grayscale shades that we have. That way we can get a wider range of color into the piece and make something that's fun and interesting. When I'm doing this kind of thing, I like to plan out my overlay colors and apply even spacing to the changes in hue just like how we planned out the even spacing of the brightness in grayscale. See how the hue changes by exactly 30 from one color to the next? For the purposes of planning the overlay colors, I usually keep the saturation fairly moderate as well, let's just say around 50, and the brightness around 80 to 100. But you should experiment with different levels and you'll end up with different overlay looks. 
So to implement each of these overlay colors, we'll take the magic wand tool to select each of the individual grayscale tones, and then on a new layer, fill each selection using the different colors. In this example, I'm using the purple over the darkest tone, all the way towards the cyan over the lightest tone. From here, we'll just make sure that the layer mode is again set to the color option, and now we've got this look with some more color depth to it than just the original single color overlay. Also, sometimes I do find that the appearance of the overlay colors aren't exactly as I'd like, so I usually go in and refine the colors with small tweaks to the hue, saturation, and brightness of the individual colors themselves. I find that the overlay step does a pretty good job getting you close to where you want to be, but the fine tuning is where you can bring some more of your own preference into it. So using these approaches, I've come up with a few Super Game Boy inspired four color palettes. A lot of times I'll just pull color combos that I already know I like, or certain things based on relationships on the color wheel. You can use a site like Adobe Color to play around and learn about different color combos and harmony relationships, such as keeping the color selections onto one area of the wheel, or split across in different complementary fashions. So I'll just cycle through a few looks here to give you an idea of what I've come up with. Um, I've tried to hit a few different moods, and in some cases I've used a bit of a prompt word and then kind of came up with a palette based on that to match it. So I hope this information has been useful. Um, this video is sort of part way between being a tutorial and also just me sharing my own personal preferences for creating new color palettes. And I've put all these finalized palettes together onto one image, so if you'd like to try out these exact ones for yourself, there's a link in the description and the comments so you can download an image of the full set. Alright, let's go ahead and end it on a very special color changing edition of CRT Time. Thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.